Hello everyone, welcome back to the Zach F1 channel. And in today's video, I'll be going over all of the F1 fantasy tips and selections and all the news going into the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in Baku. Now, last weekend, we'll quickly look over my team. I did extremely well, 283 points. The only thing I could have done better was Leclerc times two, but I thought Norris had it in the bag more than Leclerc, not gonna lie. However, that Triple Williams did work out this weekend and switching over from Mercedes assets to Ferrari assets really worked out. Let's see if it works out this weekend. But anyway, before I start this video, thank you for the support. Follow me on Twitter if you want any more updates and news on F1 Fantasy and join my Discord for any more talks with like-minded people who want to talk about F1 Fantasy and F1 in general. So let's get straight into it. So first off, I do have to say this part of the video will be quite a big rant on quite a few things. I will put a mark in the video for where this rant ends. If you want to go straight into my thoughts about Mercedes versus Ferraris, the team selections and which drivers look better and which constructors look better. But basically, we have this whole Logan Sargent situation. So he has become an inactive driver. And last weekend, and last weekend, myself and a lot of other like-minded teams kept Logan Sargent in because we knew it was worth keeping Sargent as an inactive driver at 4.8 million to improve your team elsewhere. Yes, we all agreed that that was very scummy. And now we have to change our teams because you get a minus 25 on inactive drivers if this happens. However, this isn't the issue. It's the way they did it. This is not the way this whole situation should have been done. They made it a lot more difficult than it had to be. Because last weekend, of course, I had Sargent in my team, so it didn't affect me that much. But it affected a lot of other teams not being able to afford Norris and Leclerc and McLaren and Ferrari because they couldn't have Sargent in their team. Now, you know what the quick solution was? Just swap out Sargent for Carlo Pinto. Guess what price they were? They were the exact same price. So I don't understand the people back at like F1 Fantasy headquarters. They thought, oh, let's make them both 4.8 million, but keep both of them in F1 Fantasy. It's, I understand if it was like, say they put Carlo Pinto at 5 million, 5.5 million, but it makes no sense just swap one out for the other. That's all they had to do. And they screwed that up, which then led to Monza having people like me having an advantage over other teams. And now it's led to Baku, where all of our teams who had that now have to faff about changing our teams around as well. And considering, like I said, it was a much easier option, they completely screwed this up. And it's just another thing F1 Fantasy needs to get ahead of if they really want to be a big fantasy game because you don't see these massive cock-ups from the other fantasy games. Then the other issue is, of course, K-Mag has a one race ban. That is fine, but it's just, again, another mistake from F1 Fantasy. How hard is it to change the prices back? There is 1% who still have Behrman in their team. They are inactive teams, but because he was priced at 15 million when he was at Ferrari, his price at Haas is now 15 million. He's, he's just no one's gonna pick him. There is no reason that he should be a premium driver in a Haas. So basically, you've gone, okay, let's make Magnussen now active for a weekend. Again, also that's an issue because now he's taking a minus 25 and some people, again, have to take him out of their teams and then bring him back. It shouldn't be like that. I think for one weekend, an inactive driver like Magnussen's fine. But again, how can his replacement be 15 million? Behrman should be no more than 7 million max. Pushing 8 million, if that. But 15 million, ugh. F1 Fantasy really need to think ahead now into the future and think, what are they doing? Because these are the times where it gets really frustrating. Because someone like me, I'm not going to get everything correct as well. I'm not going to get everything spot on. But it's just mental how every single time they do something, I'm like, well, that's just the complete wrong thing to do. And I 100% think that all of you watching and everyone in the community also agrees how ridiculous this whole situation is. The inactive drivers is stupid. Why The minus 25, it should have just been a swap for Sergeant to Colopinto, take Sergeant out of the game. And then this whole thing with Behrman being 15 million, absolute joke. But well, anyway, I'm sorry about that rant. That is all of the ranting for today's video. Let's get on to what my thoughts will be for the Baku Grand Prix. So one of the big things is Mercedes versus Ferrari. Now, last weekend, it was a heated conversation because a lot of people stuck with Mercedes thinking it's a safe option because Ferrari, let's get real, haven't been that amazing since Canada. So pushing two... Ferrari for Monza, very scary, but it worked out for anyone who did bring in Ferrari. Of course, you had Sainz in fourth place and Leclerc in first. Very much did work out. However, going into Baku, slightly different track, but here's the thing. They're both high-speed tracks. 
that should do well for Ferrari. Ferrari normally do pretty well here in Baku. Of course, Leclerc's had a pole here and, of course, lost it again. Ferrari and McLaren love getting on pole and losing it. But for me, I think with Ferrari's history here, always doing pretty well, and with their car doing well in Monza, meaning most likely it's going to do okay, if, if not very good, in Baku. I think for me, they are still the best option out of Ferrari and Mercedes there. However, because now we can't have Triple Williams, does come down to if you can afford it now. Because if you can't afford it, Mercedes will still be a very valid option. And then we'll talk about the Norris two times because, of course, we need to talk about where you put your two times. And for me, it still is Lando Norris, purely because... Piastri, again, he's pushed more and more back. I think the further down the season we go, the more he's going to be told he can't do things. And McLaren looked like the most consistent top team at the minute. Every single race weekend, Mercedes looked better, Red Bull looked better, Ferrari looked better. They're a bit of a roulette wheel. Whereas McLaren, you know what you're getting. So the safe option is Norris for me. And of course, there might be a good team in practice that I then say to go on to two times for now. Norris is the safe two times option again. But anyway, let's talk about my favourite cheap drivers. And first of all, like I said, Sargent is a no-go. Because technically he's still in the game, but you have to get rid of him now. Otherwise you'll take a minus 25 and you do not want that on your team. That is not worth it anymore. Then you have both Joe and Bottas who are pretty much useless in that Sauber. Unless you physically have to bring one in. And... For me, I would pick Joe over Bottas purely because Joe is slightly cheaper. So it probably means you can buy in a better premium driver. But if you can afford your premium driver you want, then I would go Bottas instead. They're both pretty dud drivers, however, though. So my idea is take the one that's cheaper and improve your team elsewhere. However, the very solid option that would rival some of the middle cheap drivers would be Curla Pinto. He is 100% the best option. He showed in Italy how well he can do in that Williams. So hopefully he can keep this going. But I'm very excited to see what he can do at 5.3 million. He is the cheapest driver by far in F1 Fantasy still. So you have to get on him. The Williams is looking decent this part of the season. Then onto the middle cheap drivers. I'll go over my top three. And for me, it has to be Alex Alwan as the best option. Yes, I know he's been down 0.1 million the last weekend and 0.2 million the last weekend before. But here's the thing. Yes, in Netherlands, it looks like he had a bad race. He actually had a miracle recovery. He had a minus 15 and got back to minus 2. And he did qualify 8th. So if they didn't get disqualified, Williams, in qualifying for the race, he would have been perfectly fine. And then in Italy, he had another great race, just being on the edge of that 0.5 million increase and just missed it at 6 points. It was very tight. If you're getting 5 plus points as an F1 Fantasy asset in that middle cheap driver range, that is fine. And at his price, you have to be having him in your team. Then the next best option is Nico Hulkenberg. Of course, like I said, it's always good to have a hash driver in your team. He didn't have the best result in Monza. And he hasn't had the best results in the last two or three races. However, if there is one team and one driver who can get 10 plus points in F1 Fantasy, it is Nico Hulkenberg. So it is worth the risk to keep him in your team and hope that he has one of those just miraculous races. Especially with K-Mag not being there and Behrman and his teammate being so expensive. I think Hulkenberg's that option at 9.7 million. Again, cheaper than most other drivers as well. And then for third place, you have the Alpine drivers. For me, Gasly is still the better option as he is cheaper. However, they flip-flop which one is better. That's why I think Gasly, just stick with him as a cheap driver. Again, Gasly, I think, is the better driver as well. So hopefully he can push forward. However, honorable mention to Lance Stroll as he is now a middle cheap driver at 14.7 million. So if you are playing with a single premium driver build, 100%, I'd say to bring him in because he is a guaranteed if he doesn't crash five plus points because Aston Martin yes they're not as good as they used to be however they'll always get you a few overtakes and get you close to the top 10. Then let's talk about the premium drivers and for me Sergio Perez comes up as the first name you've got to think of when you think of Baku however I would not be taking this risk not gonna lie <laughs> honestly I understand he is the only multiple race winner at Baku but if you bring him into your F1 fantasy team you are taking a risk that I am not going to be advising you do so I'd still steer clear of Sergio Perez this race weekend however my top three going into this weekend premium driver wise would of course be Lando Norris at top McLaren should be doing okay here I mean they should be doing the best if not second best going into most races this season 
for the end of this season now. So I definitely think Lando Norris is the safe option and the best option so far. He won't get you a lot of price changes as he's above 25 million. However, just as a solid asset points wise, he is the best. Then you have Charles Leclerc. Of course, he's just come off the back of his 1 million price increase. And of course, he won the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. He's gonna have some good form here. We know he does well here. And if Ferrari can eventually give him race pace at Baku, I think he's a driver to watch out for. And again, I think it's one of those drivers where if you can fit him in, try to fit him in. And of course, like I said, he's the differential where you've got the McLarens of Norris and Piastri. And if you want another driver elsewhere, it's probably Leclerc, maybe Hamilton. And then third place would be Oscar Piastri purely because he's very consistent. And yes, he's still a great asset. He'll still get you a top four finish. But the further down the line we get of this season, the more McLaren go, right, you've got to help out Lando Norris in this championship fight. And I know people will disagree with what I've said there because there's been a lot of statements from McLaren, papaya rolls and all this bollocks. But they seriously know if, if this gets tight, they know that they have to put Norris first. It's a shame for Piastri. I do love Piastri. But I do think that he will do that for the team because honestly, I think next season, they have the same car next season. I think Piastri will be fighting for the championship as well. Then he can go for it then. But then honorable mentions will have to be George Russell and Lewis Hamilton, depending on your team value. So if your team value is quite high, you bring in Norris and Lewis Hamilton, then that's fine. But if you can only afford Norris and George Russell, that is completely fine as well. It's all depending on your team value. So it's not too bad. The Mercedes drivers aren't bad assets. It's just the Ferraris look better right now. Now. now let's go on to the team selection for this weekend. So first off, talking about team selections, just remember that me using Limitless here doesn't mean you have to use Limitless there. It's just to show all of these teams. It's not actually that I'm using Limitless, just remember that. However, the first team up will be looking like this with Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, McLaren and Ferrari as the big four of the team. Now, you can still have this team if you can't afford it with Hulkenberg, Albon, Colapinto. Colapinto stays the same, but if you need a bit more team value, you're 100%, you could drop Hulkenberg down to Bottas or down to Joe. And if you need even more than that, drop Albon down to Bottas or Joe as well. Then you can fill this team. Because as of now, the cheap drivers and the cheap middle drivers aren't really performing crazily well. So keep an eye on making sure you have the best premium drivers if you want to go for a team like this. However, if you don't agree with me and you think the cheap middle drivers are important, what you could do as well is drop Ferrari to Mercedes. However, the constructor is more important. So I would be very careful if you are dropping Ferrari down to Mercedes or if Mercedes look better, Mercedes down to Ferrari. Then moving on to the next team, and this team is very much if Mercedes decide to show up in practice, and this, of course, is the Mercedes team. So, of course, you still have Norris as your two-time driver, but now you have Lewis, Hamilton, Hulkenberg, Albon, Colapinto, McLaren, and Mercedes. And again, you can do similar things to this team as well. Say you need more team value, you drop down to Bottas. And again, say you need even more than that, you drop down to Joe. Again, Salvas aren't the best to have, but if you could afford Norris, Hamilton, McLaren and Mercedes with these three drivers, then you're sitting pretty anyway. And then constructor wise, let's say you don't want the cheap middle drivers such as Albon and Hulkenberg because you want a better constructor, then you could move from Mercedes to Ferrari and then you've got a bit of everything. So then if Mercedes do well and Hamilton do well, you're fine. If McLaren dominate, you've got the McLaren domination there. And if Ferrari do well, you still get them as a constructor. I would also like to add George Russell is a potential choice for this team as well. However, just be careful because yes, there's a reason he's 21.1 million. But if you value the cheap middle drivers and the cheap drivers a little bit more, this could be a team for you. Or potentially if you just can't afford it and you really want to have Ferrari as constructor, then this is a sort of team you'd want to look for as well. Then of course you have the playing it safe team. I spoke about this team two weeks ago as well, but it basically is a triple McLaren team with Ferrari, Hulkenberg, Albon, and Color Pinto. However, again, you can do the exact same thing with this team. If you can't afford the cheap driver, if you can't afford Hulkenberg and Albon, you can drop them down to Bottas and Joe. And if you wanna keep them but can't afford Ferrari, you can drop them down to Mercedes instead. Then finally, we have the one single premium driver build, which will look like this. So for the single premium driver team, this team consists of Lando Norris, Lance Stroll, Hulkenberg, Albon, Colapinto with Ferrari and McLaren. Of course, you have the two best constructors out there right now. 
Potentially, you could move to Mercedes if Mercedes look better. You have the best free cheap drivers as well. I know it's crazy to think Carlo Pinto is one of the better drivers right now, but from what we've seen so far, he should be doing pretty decent results. Hockenberg and Albon, no issues there. And then, of course, Lance Stroll, because he's now less than 15 million, he is technically a cheap driver. So that is more to get your team value up. And also, he is more likely to get five plus points than any of the other cheap drivers in the Saubers, in the Alpines. Because yes, Aston Martin aren't amazing, but they're still better than most of the other teams out there. Then finally, chips wise, let's have a look at some of the chips you can use. And funnily enough, guess what? Say it with me, like I say every weekend, if it's not a sprint race weekend, then you don't use chips. Then you don't use any chips. So, of course, so no limitless, no autopilot, no no negative, and no extra DRS. Of course, wildcard, it depends on where your team is. Potentially, if you have both Magnuson and Sargent, wildcard could be an option. So, yes, sort of a chip could be used there. But final fix, again, I'd be surprised if anything crazy happened. But that is only for if we see that after qualifying. So you'll have to wait and see if the final fix works out. But again, like always, the big chips like Limitless, No Negative, Extra DRS and Autopilot are always more useful at Sprint Race Weekends. There's more points on the cards, which means that you can get more points overall. But anyway, quickly before we close out this video, I would like to give a shout out to my top five in my league, which at the minute is Porsche F1 with 3,983 points. Congratulations there. You've got a massive lead at the minute, so congratulations. Your team was pretty decent at Monza as well, so well done. Then you have Enema de G at 3,928, moving up into second place. This is new heights for Enema de G. So congratulations there. Yeah, you've worked out splendidly with that McLaren Ferrari build last weekend. Then you have Leapers 1 dropping down to third place with 3,912 points. I like the risk you took. Honestly, it was worth it, especially if you're in that like top position to go for it. And you did get the Leclerc times two right. It's just a shame that Mercedes really did bottle the rest of it and McLaren were a very good constructor. However, I know for a fact that you will bounce back because you always do. Then in fourth place, we have Colt Viet flat out at 3,860 points. Congratulations there. And then fifth place, we have a new team in fifth place, which is which is Ricciardo, Don't, who had a very good weekend last race, getting 269 points. Congratulations to all five of you. Remember, there is a £200 prize pool for anyone in the top five. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed seeing all of the tips and tricks you can use for F1 Fantasy, listening to my little rant at the start, the team selections, all of this. And remember, I will be making a video post practice too to give my final thoughts before all of the live streams. And then I will be live streaming on my channel a little bit earlier on a Saturday and for not as long. And then I have another surprise for you going into that weekend as well. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. See you all later. Bye-bye.